Hello, in this video, we'll practice some questions which are TI for a JGE builds type questions and this is a session 2. Don't forget to check out the session 1 and you would find it in the I button. Now if you are preparing for JG builds and you are super confused that where you can start your preparation, what could be the standard of questions, this video would be very helpful for you because in this video we are going to solve some questions that are very similar to TI for JG builds. Now if you are looking for other sources to practice uh, questions, then let me tell you Unacademy's platform is pretty good. And for IIT Jam, they are starting a new course uh, for IIT Jam Biotechnology. It's a 90 days crash course. So the batch 7 has been started from 10th November. So you can download the Academy app. You can click on the link. Everything is provided in the description. You can quickly register and you can use my code AP10 to get a 10% discount as well. Let's get back to the question. So we are going to solve only two questions and we are going to go really slowly because all of these questions requires thought. And I'm going to pause for a moment such that you can read this question and I'll uh, read this question with you as well. So this question says ion exchange chromatography separates ions and polar molecules based on their affinity to the ion exchanger. Look at the elution profile of some proteins marked as X, Y, and Z. Which of the elution profile correspond to which protein? So these kind of questions, I mean, not exactly this, but this perform of question is very common for ti 5 bills. So what is ion exchange chromatography? You really don't need to know, but they have already provided a definition for that. Then what you need to understand based on this knowledge, how you can interpret this data. So this kind of data interpretation is a common theme for TI for JG pills. And that's what we need for scientific uh, understanding, right? So let's look at it. And let's pause for a moment till you guess it. So at this point, pause this video and try to guess the answer. So the correct statement here is A. Now, first, the protein Y would be eluted then second would be protein Z and lastly protein X would be eluted. Now let me tell you how. Ion exchange chromatography is totally dependent on ionic interactions. In cation exchange chromatography the resin or the column material is negatively charged and all the counter ions are positively charged so your protein of interest for annihilate has to be positive charged which is going to replace the counter ions. In anion exchange chromatography, it's just the opposite. The resin is positively charged and other proteins are negatively charged. Now, in this particular example, we have three elution profiles marked by 1, 2 and 3. And there is a steep increasing sodium uh, chloride concentration. So, when we increase the concentration of sodium chloride or increase the concentration of sodium, it would first replace the protein which is least strongly bound with the resin. So the strength of this binding is based on ionic interaction. Greater the positive charge in the protein, greater would be the strength of binding. So this particular protein in green has only three positive charges. So it would be eluted at the beginning. Then the orange protein because it has few more charges than this green protein but less charges than that blue protein and the blue protein which was demarked as X in the question would be eluted last because it has a majority of uh, its charge is basically positive charge. So it would be eluted at the end and this is how the question was framed. So now we understand the sequence of elution as well. So these are very practical oriented problems. Next we go to another question. In this question, we can understand uh, some application of PCR, restriction enzyme, etc. All compound. So using CRISPR-Cas9, you have generated a point mutation in a gene X. That's great. Now you have to screen 450 clones or individual lines to screen for the mutation. What methodology would be appropriate? 
So again, it talks about a strategy. So first strategy is next generation sequencing of all the 450 clones. PCR based screens followed by a restriction digestion for the, of the PCR products. C, single cell RNA sequencing. D is shotgun sequencing. So a lot of sequencing methods are associated with this question. So you can get uh, an overview of all these sequencing uh, informations in my uh, other channel. But anyway, focus on this question. Here, you can possibly do next gen sequencing and sequence whole genome of every 450 clones. But that's labor intensive, time consuming, and above all, it is really expensive. So always you should think about some solution which is economically feasible and elegant. So here the correct option would be option B and let me tell you how. So this is your CRISPR. So your guide RNA has guided the uh, enzyme into a particular gene of interest that you want to manipulate and now you have a repair oligo which would be replacing a portion of the double-stranded break and thereby a mutation is incorporated either in one site or in the other site. Now what we can possibly do is using a agarose gel. We can use a agarose gel electrophoresis to understand whether we can uh, determine the point mutation or not. So we are going to perform PCR we are going to perform a PCR reaction around the, um, let's say, a 200 base pair worth PCR around the point of mutation. So let's say we need, don't need to assess the whole genome. We only want to look at this particular portion. And let's say this is kind of 200 base pair, right? So if the mutation is there, it would be in this 200 base pair or if it is not there, it won't be there in this, uh, won't be there outside, right? So this 200 base pair, let's say, is our point of interest. So what we can do, we can try to PCR amplify from all these 450 lines. From all these 450 lines, we would do the same PCR, okay? So we would have the same primer which bind here and binds here. So from all 450 individual lines, this segment would be amplified. Then there is the catch. So you have to assume that if there is an incorporation of this particular mutation, it might lead to gain or loss of a restriction site. Let's say we would look for, bioinformatically, we would look for uh, which restriction site is gained. Let's say uh, we, we have gained a uh, XHO1 restriction site. This restriction site was not there, but due to this mutation, due to this mutation, now XHO1 recognize this site. So obviously XHO1 can cut in this particular location, right? Now what we are going to do, we are going to take all of these 450 lines, PC and amplify them, and then we restriction digest with XHO1 and then run all of them in a gel. So simply we have to do a PCR. So this process is simple. We have to do PCR from 450 lines. Then we have to do our restriction digestion. And then we have to run the gel. Now, if there is a point mutation, the restriction, mu the restriction enzyme would recognize it and cut it. So we should get a truncated band. So our PCR reaction can tell us about it. So that was overall uh, idea behind this question. So it was really simple and these kind of strategy could be really utilized uh, for screening uh, of point mutations. Now this is only one example. It, no, it might not be a CRISPR but any other kind of line that's completely okay. But this strategy is really important. Once we narrow down to let's say five, six line, then it is okay to sequence them and know exactly whether that base has been replaced and not and validating all of these things. So I hope these two questions are useful and it help you to think about these questions and give you an idea that how things can, uh, can be asked. 
So I, if you like this video, give it a good thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.